Maybe we should take the old car out for a spin, huh? Okay, well, there should be a sound there to signify that it's been unlocked and it's ready to roll, but uh... Well, this thing's blinking, which means the battery in the key fob is okay, but I suspect the battery in the actual car has drained. Yeah, I made the mistake of neglecting the poor thing all through the winter months, which I just let the life get the best of me and I didn't have time to work on the car all winter. I'm Jet Falco, welcome back to the channel. This is the car side of things, it's like my side hobby. I do art, I do comics and music and all sorts of cool DIY stuff. And then when I get extra time, I try and do car stuff. So, welcome and I hope you enjoy this quick tutorial. We're going to swap out that old Panasonic stock battery that the FRS and the 86 and BRZ comes with and we're going to replace it with this beast of a yellow top. Optima battery. Everyone needs a new battery eventually. Most people have cars for upwards of 8 to 10 years now and you're gonna have to swap out the battery at some point so let's go ahead and try and do it ourselves if we can get the damn thing unlocked. Replacing the battery in your car is one of the simplest DIY fixes you can do at home in about 20 minutes with simple tools like this 10 millimeter socket. A wrench works just fine. If your car is dead and locked, most fobs have a hidden key. If not, refer to your car's manual to find the alternate mode of entry. Car batteries have an average life of anywhere from three to five years. I'm lucky mine lasted as long as it did. Pop the hood and make sure you have a clear work area as batteries can be heavy and large. In the FRS BRZ86 model, the battery housing area is pretty tight, so a well-lit open space helps. Locate the battery in your engine bay and put some gloves on. Gloves are always a good idea when working with your car, especially around harmful materials. Older batteries are prone to leaking dangerous acid, so make sure you're safe. Here we have the almighty multimeter. For less than 10 bucks, it's a great way to test if you've got power. For car batteries, set it to the 20 volt range. For most multimeters, the red probe should be plugged in the socket with the omega or ohm symbol, and the black probe should be plugged in the socket labeled com. Switch it on and connect positive red to red and negative black to black. This is also a good time to check if you have any corrosion or damage to your terminals. Clean terminals are key to having a healthy car. You may need to remove corrosion with some sandpaper or wire brush. Surprisingly, this old battery has very clean terminals. As you can see, it only holds about over one volt. Ah, pitiful. You've served me well in the past years, my friend. It's time for you to retire. While we're at it, let's test the new battery. The normal voltage needed to start a car is around 12.6 to 12.7 volts. So if yours reads any lower, you may need a battery trickle charger to bring it back to health. The magic number for these yellow top batteries is actually 12.4, so anything above that is golden. Batteries can lose charge while sitting on store shelves for long periods of time. If your new battery is reading less than 12.4, you may need to charge it with a proper battery charger. Once you're ready, carefully loosen the bolts holding the connectors down. Take care not to accidentally bridge the gap between any metal terminals or metal surfaces with your metal tools. Don't risk a dangerous shock, even with a weak ass battery. Always disconnect negative first. A good memory trick I like to use is negative has one line, positive has two lines, and one comes before two. However, when reconnecting your new battery, this will be reversed with positive first. So that rhymes, that's another good memory trick, but another one is new battery, new things, happy life, positive, eh, eh, eh. Okay, well that's cheesy, but it works. Once the connecting wires are removed, I like to place them aside, pinned down, and wrapped in a dry cloth so no other possible connections are made and the area is clear. Before you can remove the old one, find where your battery is secured to the walls of the bay. In the 86, we've got a metal crossbar secured with L bolts, so remove them slowly as to not touch the terminals. Put a dry cloth over the terminal source and added security. Batteries can be super heavy at weird angles, so be careful leaning in and lifting it out of the bay. Now, let's compare the two. The old battery was a Panasonic Group 35 medium size, weighing about 17 pounds. The new one is also Group 35, but with over double the weight and 36 pounds. So if you're tracking your car, you might need to look in cutting weight somewhere else to compensate for the gain. When upgrading your battery in the same group size, you also might find alternate fit, as this is obviously an inch or two shorter. Luckily, Optima supplies us with a storage lid that doubles as a riser. And we don't want that extra bolt height sticking up, so let's snap the riser into place underneath the battery. The tabs all around the edge of the base will hold it together. 
Whenever you replace any part, it's a good idea to clean the area around it, removing debris, road dust, and dirt. There was even a few leaves down here. How the hell did those get way down there? Luckily, Toyobaru has made it easy for us with this lovely battery tray. So let's give it a quick spit shine. <laughs> oh, beautiful. And it always helps to vacuum the surrounding area as well. Reinstalling the tray is a breeze. Two indented knobs fit into the corresponding holes below, so alignment isn't an issue. Now that our areas are clean, let's get that newer, stronger, beefier performance battery installed. Make sure the red and black terminals are aligned where your cables are located. Leaving the terminal covers on will make it much easier to tell. Use care when handling metal parts like the crossbar tie-down or your hand tools, as new batteries will hold much more dangerous power. Take your time. Make sure your tie-down or crossbar is secure, especially ones with L bolts, as those can be a bit squirrely. Another tip to note is to not over-tighten your crossbar. True story, my other car got a new battery recently and the shop put the bar on way too tight. That actually cut into the plastic and created little crevices for the acid to escape through when the harsh heat and cold affected the battery. I'm fairly certain we'll need to replace that one soon too. So it's a good idea to just make it snug enough and not over tighten it with power tools. It's also a good idea to note, use a battery installation kit with felt protector pads and silicone grease to protect the terminals from moisture, rust, and any possible future corrosion. If you can't afford the couple bucks, a few sprays of WD-40 also helps. I forgot to buy a set of my own, so I'll add mine later. Before connecting the positive terminal first, use your felt pads beneath the connection if you've got them, and make sure the connection is snug. Tighten the bolt and spread the silicone grease to completely cover the terminal connection, or spray it gently with some good old WD-40 to prevent corrosion. Do the same for the negative terminal and connect it quickly and sternly because the car's connection to the power source has fully bridged and you don't want to linger in this motion as sparks may fly. If you listen close, you can actually hear them. Ooh. Now that everything's snug, clean off your area and stare at your new battery in awe. Look at that thing. It's beautiful. The sense of accomplishment, the feeling of fulfillment, the exciting exuberance of doing something yourself. Pride in fixing your car cannot be complete without the real test of every car DIY project starting it up. Oh yeah, and feel free to bust out your multimeter one more time to test the battery while starting the car and watch the level once your alternator gives it charge. It should drop to around 10 volts and then rise back up to 14 and settle between 13 and 14 while running. That's the sign of a healthy battery and now you can take it out for a drive. Best first drive with the new power? Right back to the parts store and a trade in that old piece of crap. Pretty much all the stores will give you a little money back for your old one, so take advantage of that little discount when upgrading your battery. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps. Good luck and be careful changing your battery. Shout out to all the people who make this and every video I do possible. If you'd like to join them, there's a link below. I'll see you in the next one.